Hey everyone, my name is Donald and in this video we're going to show you and walk you through the modern events calendar settings and how to set it up so that your viewers can actually see events on your website. So once you've installed the modern events calendar uh, add-on through the overview page, and it's going to show up here once you validate your license, it's going to show up down here with the rest of them. You're going to have a new menu over here called ME Calendar. Once you click on the actual main ME Calendar navigation, it's going to take you to like a, a separate dashboard for its own calendar. Uh, so you'll see how many events you have, how many short codes, the different locations, organizers, and some of your upcoming events. Um, not really too big of a deal to worry about this page, but it just kind of gives you an overall view of what's going on with the plugin. So if we go over here to navigate to the left where we say all events, we're going to see a couple of default ones that were already loaded. I like to go ahead and delete them because I don't want them inside of the actual uh, events for the website. But if you guys want to see how ones are created or some settings to get to a certain point, like, you know, daily each three days or one time multiple day event, feel free to go inside of those and take a look and see how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and delete them. And once they're deleted, you can navigate also to the short codes section underneath that main menu, and you're going to see a bunch of different pre-made short codes. There are a lot to choose from, and I definitely suggest you go through each one of these just to see how each one is made. So that way you can you know, view, for example, how to do a countdown view for your a next upcoming event. Okay, And then from there, you can choose different ones. You can have different styles that they offer, which changes whichever skin you choose. You can uh, change your date formats, um, what kind of events come coming, the background colors. There's just a bunch of different ones that you guys can choose from in order to stylize the front end look. Uh, I also like to delete those all because I like to start from scratch. I don't want to have I want to have as l the least amount of bloat on my website as possible. Okay, so right now we have those two cleared out and we have our settings. Let's go ahead and navigate to that. There are so many settings to choose from. It's awesome. Everything that you can think of is pretty much here. So let's just do a quick uh, once over for that. General options, the archive page title, page skin, all of these right here, I pretty much would just leave them be. Uh, the events page title for the archive, I would name that events. Um, whatever your weekdays or weekends are for whatever time zone you're in, it may change depending on where you are. Um, basically, I just have these all default. Uh, the slugs and permalinks, I leave this as events, and you can change this so it's not MEC category, but maybe the initials of your brand category. So, for example, it could be like dev, because that's what the kind of site this is. But for your website, uh, I have a client where her initials are IBHCB, so we can do that. These event details for the single event page, so the month, day, year, and then you can always do the next occurrence date. I leave all of this default as well. Your currency options, of course, you're going to have to change this depending on what country you're in. Um, this is all based on where you are. Google Maps, uh, paste your API key here, and you can get that from credentials. Dot, let's see, credentials. Dot de I'm sorry, console.developers.google.com. Okay, and you can have that there. I have a bunch of API keys. So go ahead, generate one for your Google Maps, paste it in here, um, and then I would adjust your zoom level somewhere closer to the 14 through 17 range, and that's kind of a straight view. Okay, you can also disable it so that it doesn't show the Google Maps of the location of the event on the single events page. Uh, you can have directions enabled, so simple and advanced. Uh, and a light box for the date format. I would just leave that the same or however you like to view it. Um, so for the recaptcha, you enable that. It means that you know for people booking the site or front end submission, then that's where you would have the Google uh, recaptcha. And you guys can get one of those codes from Google site for google.com forward slash recaptcha. Okay. So go ahead and get your key there if you want it. 
I don't want to have that there. The export module options, this is something for Google Calendar and iCal so that you can export it to a Google Calendar or you can export it to uh, an iDevice if you want to do it there as well. Local time module, so basically this will show the time for the event based on the person who's visiting the event and not based on the actual time zone of the, um, the website. You can have so that it shows a countdown module on the event page, and you can choose different size styles. Uh, social networks to share it on. Uh, just keep whichever ones you want checked. Turn them off. They look gray. Turned on. They look blue. Uh, the next event module. So this will show when the next event is. Okay. So you can do the next occurrence of the current event if it's a multiple day event, or you can do a next occurrence of other events right here and it'll just show like the next event that you're going to have that's in your list from the uh, ME calendar for all the events that you have. Uh, if you want people to be able to submit on the front end an event. So basically maybe if you're managing a website and you want the owner of the website to submit events on the front end so they don't have to give them to you, uh, you can do that just like this. Use the short codes to enter them in. Um, create two pages for these so they can actually view them and this will let you right here uh, do by guest or non logged in users and uh, there's always an option to enable mandatory email and name so you know who is submitting them uh, it gives you different options for the sections for the front end submission form to have if you don't care about the labels or the event color or the tags you can always turn each of these options off um, the booking module. So this allows people to actually purchase tickets on your on your website for the event. Okay. And for the date format, however you would like to have it, month, day, year, um, and how many dates. There's always a custom thank you page that you guys can do. Now for this email verification, there is a little bit of a like um a little bit of a, a opposite way of how this works so let me just go ahead and double check on the settings for you in just a second because there's a couple things there okay so for the auto verification for free bookings so if the event does not cost money but they still have to register but you don't want them to have to verify their their actual registration so basically it'll send them an email saying hey Go ahead and verify uh, your booking so that we can go ahead and get you on the books for it. And I could just go ahead and read what it says. Um, it'll do a please verify your booking by clicking the following link and it'll have the verification link. And once they verify the free booking, then it's going to go ahead and confirm it, which is the auto confirmation for free bookings. Basically, I would suggest that you click all four. And that will automatically verify and allow them to book without you having to do anything on the back end. Um, and it will automatically send an email to both them and the uh, admin of the site saying, hey, your booking is confirmed. This is where you need to be at this time. Um, and, of course, all of those email notification options are editable. So you can go ahead and customize it however you want. If you want to enable coupons, you can do that. And if you want to go ahead and enable taxes and fees, uh, the, Buddy the Buddy Press integration basically allows you to put a list of who is attending the event on the single events page. So you can go ahead and do that as well. MailChimp, if you want all of their emails to go into a MailChimp subscriber list, this is how you do it here. You would just get your API key from MailChimp whatever the list ID is that you have, and then uh, subscribe by automation or subscribe by verification. So it'll ask them in an email, are you sure you want to subscribe? Okay, so since you are going to have this add-on through ThemeCo, you do not need to worry about the purchase code because ThemeCo will push out the updates for it. So that basically covers the general settings. Uh, let's go to the notifications. And basically, these are all the notifications that get sent to you when someone um, adds a new event. Um, and 
all of the other notifications are not showing. Let's see. Uh, maybe it's because I have it turned on, so it's automatic. Let's just confirm that real quick. Ah, I don't have the booking turned on, so that's why it didn't show me. So let's go ahead and turn that on, and then I can go ahead and add those different options. Okay, so the booking verification, you can change all of the text here. And you can add it so there's custom recipients. Otherwise, you're just going to send it to the admin email on the website. You can change it here, and you have all of your different placeholders down here. Same for booking confirmation, admin notification, new event. Um, and so you can go ahead and customize all of those to be however you want, and they go to wherever you want. Okay, so let's go to the styling options. From here, you can choose a pre-colored uh, square for your the look of your calendar, or you can choose a custom, you know, color here. Whatever you guys may choose that would match the branding for the actual website. And of course, you can always choose different fonts, or you can have it a default font, so it'll take the actual font from Themeco's settings. You have a custom CSS section where you can add different styles if you are comfortable with that. And this is basically changing like the terms if you wanted to go ahead and change how these look or the spelling of these. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys at the next one.